Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the weekly recap, the Asian preview from Privateer FX. Just trying to adjust the screen here a little bit. It seems kind of small. Um, <coughs> went through all the newspapers over the weekend and try to see if there's any sort of narrative building. Um, Generally pretty quiet. The uh, government shutdown in the U.S. has continued. Uh, no end in sight there. Trump still wants his wall. Um, I would say the biggest news was Trump tweeting about how talks with, he had a conversation with uh, China's Xi over the weekends and reported that there's big progress in the trade talks with his counterparts in China and the negotiations are moving along very well toward a comprehensive deal. Now, you know, that might just be him in his normal tweet storm, but um, I believe the Xinhua reported that uh, Xi was hoping that the officials, that the, uh, the two countries could meet in the middle and, and actually make progress. This would be a big deal, you know, over the next few weeks if, in fact, they can come to some sort of agreement that both sides are happy with the outcome, um, that, would lend a, uh, that would lend a bid to this beleaguered equity market. Um, we got mid-January. Uh, I'm steady on China-U.S. Trade negotiations inside Australia NZ. Um, the U.K. Parliament will be voting. Um, and... Uh, there was some article out, I don't remember who it was, that said uh, it's like a 50-50 deal that Brexit ever happens if the parliament votes it down um, in the next couple weeks. So cable's been sidelined of late. Um, last week, the, the poorest performer in currencies was dollar-yen, down about a percent. WTI was pretty much unchanged on the week. Uh, gold was up 2%, hanging around this 1280 level, which is a really big um, technical level we've been looking for for months. Silver had an even more oppressive week, um, trading up 5%, closing up 5% on the week. Ten years, uh, treasuries closed at uh, 273, so just off the lows and yields, and the S&P. As you can see here, had its first up week in uh, in four. So, you know, after having a couple of big down weeks, we actually went down. Now, this moving average here, if I look at it on my other charting, um, is the 200-week moving average. We actually touched it, I think, to the tick on my Bloomberg. Um, this is a, looks a little bit off. Um, anyhow, we did have a reversal week higher, so. You know, we closed in the upper third of the, the week. We had one little push up uh, with some of the pension rebalancing on Friday in the last hour of the day. Got up to 23 and then sold back off to close to 24.88. So we're thinking when equities open in, well, it's about 12 minutes from now in the middle of this video. Um, uh, we think just with the, the, the positive rhetoric coming out of Trump and G over the weekend, um, you know, maybe you get a, a little push higher in S and P's and Nasdaq. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq chart. Similar, close the upper third. You know, pretty far from its 200 week, but we did get the we did get a retest of the 100 week here. Um, WTI we were saying was up uh, basically. It's kind of an unchanged. So that's interesting. We got down, we had this target all along around low 43, it's like 43.35. We got down to 42.30. So, and then there was a nice little late week rally where <coughs> oil, uh, you kind of had a, a, you know, almost a perfect doji week. We're starting to, starting to like buying this. Um, it's come a long way, you know, from 78. I'd really oversold, sentiment was very low. So I think, you know, combined with maybe some um, more topside in the equity space, um, that could drag oil up as well. Um, here, 
there's the future I was looking at. Yeah, 45.12 was the close there. Uh, if we pop over to the currencies, take a look at, go down the line here. Um, let's see here. So this is, so Aussie had a, uh, Aussie closed pretty much unchanged. Made a new low for this whole move. Very marginal through this. Remember, we have been targeting the 70 20 area. Um, and it got down to 70, I believe 13 was the low. And, but then, you know, closed the week pretty much unchanged up around 70 40. So there's another risk uh, pair that, you know, is correlated with uh, commodities and correlated with risk, risky assets like the equity markets. Um, Aussie yen, another new low. Um, closed near the lows, so that's not looking great. Um, so there's, you know, a little bit of a lot of these yen crosses had tough weeks. There's CAD yen, Euro yen was a doji, uh, Australian one pretty much a doji, Kiwi yen not looking great. Um, let's go over to some more of the dollar pairs. The Euro. Close the week. This is the highest close. We close at 114.34, 114.40-ish. You can see here this close is from the highest in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, you know, like 11 weeks. So we're closing up on this 114, but it's still in a range. It's kind of stuck between these 100 and 200 week moving averages. Doesn't seem to be a lot of momentum. Um, I suspect that uh, <coughs> we'll see some dollar buying. In, uh, in this last trading day of the year and uh, <clears throat> probably some more rebalancing from the pensions where they're buying equities and selling bonds that we saw you know, big flows on Wednesday and Thursday of last week and, and not as large on Friday but they have one more day you know the final year of 2018 uh, it is a full equity market um, session the bonds in the US are closing early they have a half day. They close at noon. Um, you know, liquidity will be the premium. I don't know a lot of people actually going to work tomorrow. You know, with this uh, New Year's Day being on the Tuesday, it's another shortened week. Um, we do have some data. We've got China PMIs coming out in a couple hours, and uh, we'll see how those go. Um, and kind of the highlight for the rest of the week is really the U.S. and Canadian. We do have a bunch of European PMIs coming out throughout the week, but then, you know, with uh, with New Year's Day on Tuesday, uh, all the markets are closed. Japan, I believe, is on holiday all week. So we're expecting it to be thin, um, you know, illiquid markets, kind of like what we, what we saw last week it should be. Uh, maybe a little different this week because you'll have some people coming back to play where the PL is reset to zero. Um, you know, a lot of the hedge funds were just kind of out of the market in December, and uh, hence the heightened volatility that we've experienced. But, um, you know, it feels pretty good when your PL is at zero and you're. And there's actually some narratives that are, that are worth trading, and, you know, I think, I think the market will get back and we'll start seeing we'll see some action here early part of january um somewhat optimistic of <clears throat> some themes forming and, and playing out and uh would love to see a, a nice rally in the equity complex as i'm still a seller but uh at these levels i'm not going to do much at all <clears throat> dollar cad's powerful there's the weekly so we've had a new new high weekly close of 2018 and we're actually getting back to this these levels and this, this old closing high on the weekly was 137.06 and that was back in May of 17 so we're getting into some interesting old highs and old high closes in dollar CAD um, you know I don't know I, I, some of this must be year-end um, rebalancing and maybe you know there are some dollar buying but I kind of like trying to fade the fade dollar cad tomorrow on the fix if they have another push <clears throat> dollar Swiss has been somewhat active in the fixes as well so I'll keep an eye on that tomorrow 
Dollar China not doing anything really. 687. Um, dollar Yen, we did have the lowest weekly close last week, 110.25. Um, it's the lowest weekly close that we've seen since back in uh, June. So, a lot of analysts calling for weaker dollar yen in 2019. Um, dollar yen, not a whole lot going on. Mexican peso was pretty strong. You can see dollar mex closed on the lows of the week. Um, and it was, a, it was the lowest weekly close since October for Mexican peso. It's kind of a topping formation. Um, a, lot, a lot of the research we've been reading for you know Q1 for Q1 2019 is um, emerging markets are cheap both equities bonds currencies they like those outperforming outperforming the developed markets um, so I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that theme play out unless we have a big risk off type move in January um, but I can Trump see thinking I can long see and hard about Syria pull out lawmaker sets see a few weeks of emerging market strength. I think the big boys, when they come back to play on January 2nd, will uh, put money into EM and, again, like the bonds, the stocks, and uh, by default, the currencies. So that's something I'll, I'll be watching for the first couple of weeks. Um, that coupled with maybe some equity strength, that would be kind of a perfect storm. You could, you know, you could see dollar max. Yeah, I could see this thing back down to 1850, no problem. Um, tomorrow, um, well, my tomorrow, I'll be doing the, uh, I will update the closing prices of the year, which I would like everyone to write down or mark them on your charts. Uh, they're very important. I'm also going to do, I know I promised you the, the yearly, um, the yearly charts, which why don't we go take a look at the Euro see where we are this year <clears throat> reverse a lower year nothing too exciting after a big up year in 2017 but we'll show you all the charts we'll go right down the ticker list and we'll show you these charts on the um on the uh last day of the year for me so probably t tomorrow this time um keep an eye on gold at 1280 uh, it's a big level. We closed right around there. This was a level that we've been highlighting for a while. It's literally taken months to do to get there. Let me get to the uh, daily here. That's a twelve. What was that chart? Yeah, this is the daily. So we've this is the highest daily close in, in gold that we've seen s since way back in. Uh, I guess that's July. So we like this higher. This is kind of a, a hedge against, you know, any of the risk that's out there. Let me run the Fibonacci's here for this. Will be the 2018 Fibonacci swing and the two thirds of the year is 1292. So not far. Close at 1283. Um, equities, gold, oil, everything's opening up here in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna hop. Um, again, keep an eye out for the China PMIs in a couple hours. Um, European PMIs, will, that'll be coming out the next couple days. And uh, I guess keep an eye out for Trump's tweets. Anything more, anything positive on the trade front, uh, I think, could get these S&Ps and the risk assets uh, another leg higher. So we'll leave it at that. Look out for me tomorrow on the uh, looking through the yearly charts and and posting the uh, 2018 closing prices for a bunch of these macro markets that we follow. Good luck trading, and we wish you all a happy new year. And we'll speak to you tomorrow. All the best. Cheers.